Hey friends, this is part two of a mini series where I'm sharing all of my favorite productivity tools and hacks that I personally use as a writer and entrepreneur, but really as long as you're trying to accomplish some goals, these hacks and tips are going to be totally helpful for you. Last time I shared all about my bullet journal and I'll link that video below in case you want to check it out. But in this video, I'm going to be sharing all about my Google calendar and how to create a time block schedule that works for you and your goals. I've talked about my Google calendar in the past and showed you actually in action how I use it day to day with my bullet journal in this daily vlog right here. But many of you, including my awesome patrons like Kyra Hunter and JJ Otis have been asking for more of a step by step up deep dive into how to actually create a schedule for you that looks something like this. All right, so when I set up my Google Calendar, I use it for two main uses. One is to set up an ideal schedule, which you can sort of see here, with time blocks that I believe will help me accomplish my biggest goals. The second is to track how I actually spend my time, because I think we all know we all shoot for an ideal and like a clean schedule that sort of looks like this, but that doesn't always happen. So um, if you don't track your time in real time, what I found is I run the risk of creating an ideal schedule that doesn't work for me, that will just make me frustrated in the end. So what I'm going to do is sort of show you how I set up an ideal schedule, give you guys some ideas depending on your personality and the type of work um, sort of format that you find best works for you. And then also showing you um, how I track in real time and how that's benefited me as well. So let's first set up an ideal schedule. And I've taken everything off of the Google Calendar for now so that if you're just starting with Google Calendar and you're a little lost in how to sort of get it set up, I can walk you through that process. And the first thing that I found really helpful is to um, create categories that sort of make up your writer life and your personal life so that when you put things in here, again, you see the color coding and you see the separation and you can sort of move things around and just make it really easy to set up this schedule visually. Um, so even before I I get in here as well, I would just take like a blank piece of paper and write down everything in your life that you have to schedule out. Everything, all your personal stuff. So if you have a job outside of um, writing or just different side hustles that we're going to talk about in a little bit. So like if you have your day job, if you have family stuff, if you um, have anything at all, church, whatever, um, make a category for it. And how you would do that is going to other calendars at the bottom here, pressing the plus button, creating new calendar and titling it and then just clicking create calendar and it will show up over here. Um, so I would just make that list on a piece of paper first of all those different things and then um, then put them in as calendars and then we can start um, giving them different colors and all that jazz. After I have these categories or sub calendars all set up, the second thing I do is start populating my calendar with events, obligations, commitments, personal routines first that already have claim on my schedule because it's hard to tell how much time I have left over for my goals until I do this step. Then I set any of them to recurring that would be recurring. Um, you can always go in to um, any of these and click here and then go into edit and you can make them, you know, recurring weekly on a Monday or every weekday, Monday through Friday every week. You can also do a custom and set it like Monday through Friday, like until March or until whenever. Um, and so there's a lot of different kind of things that you can set up here as well to help you out. And then I would go in and start um, looking at the free time that you have, looking at the time that is flexible so that as you're setting up your routines for writing and any other writing related things, you know where it can fit most likely. Um, and I also really love sort of dividing my writer life into three main categories. And I think you saw it before a little bit, but I have my books, um, my income, because I do some um, side hustle kind of things so I can work from home. And hopefully when we have kids, I can continue to do that because I'd love to raise my kids at home and work from home and work for myself. 
And then I also have um, stuff for my platform and networking and building all of that. So those are the three categories for me. If you're wondering how I came up with these three categories, um, you can definitely check out my goals video uh, for 2020. Um, I do talk about a goals workbook that I sort of put together for myself with an eight step strategy of how I came up with my three main goals for the year and how I broke that up into quarterly and weekly and monthly and all those different kinds of stuff um, into tasks that would go into those different um, times of the year so I could accomplish the bigger goals that I had. And so if you're just struggling to sort of narrow down your goals and figure out how to accomplish them, um, all of my patrons get access to that workbook. And so you can definitely check that out. I'll link that below as well as my goals video so you can take a look at that if you want. But anyway, again, I would take those three main goals and I would give each of them a color. And obviously you're going to break this down um, every week into even smaller tasks, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but right now we're just setting up these blocks. So I marked um, anything book re related or publishing related or writing craft, like learning related in blue, and then anything that had to do with income and side hustles in green, and then anything in platform planning and networking um, in like a purpley blue. And I actually use this also in a Kanban board that um, I've started in uh, Trello, actually. Um, so it's a digital Kanban board that I showed a little preview of in last week's video in my bullet journal video. And you guys, a bunch of you got really excited about it and wanted to see more. And so I am going to be doing a couple of videos on how I'm using Trello and sort of using these same kind of color systems um, to sort of work on my productivity even more. Um, and because I just have so much fun with this stuff, Stuff, and it really does help me make the progress uh, that I want to make. So if you're interested in that, definitely make sure you're subscribed. Let me know down in the comments what kind of things you'd like to see um, in that video or what questions you have um, and hit the like button on this video so I know to make more productivity videos like this. But then I will start filling out the space with these time blocks that I'm going to sort of set aside and be like, this is going to be the time to work on this goal. Um, and what I also want to say to too, before I get too ahead of myself is to just make sure you have some breathing room too. You can see that not every single hour, um, especially after the quote unquote work day, um, I'm not packing with everything because if you don't have some breathing room, then you're gonna drive yourself crazy. Um, so even here, like I should probably just take a lunch break and not uh, make it a working lunch. So to listen to my own advice, what I probably should do here is have a real lunch break and move this down and let it affect everything going forward, not just this event and say, okay, and then move income down. So I have a little less time for that, but um, I will probably have a lot better sanity because of it. But if you're just getting started, um, depending on the kind of person you are, here are some of my ideas for how to set up these time blocks. The first is for the people that thrive on focusing on one thing at a time and working slowly on that one thing. And I would suggest for those people, especially if you only have a hour, a couple of hours a day, is to focus only on one goal each day. And then you can layer in sort of more specific tasks. So for those kind of people, your schedule might look something more like this, where on Monday and Tuesday, I want to focus on book stuff. For Wednesday, I want to focus on platform. And then for Thursday, Friday, I want to focus on income. Now that'll probably shift and change again in real time. But for those kind of people that really thrive on, okay, just give me one thing to focus on, and that's going to really help me be successful, then you might want to separate it day by day. Then as you're going throughout your day, you can layer in the different tasks that you're doing for that um, part of your life. So here I might say that I'm editing my book and I'm going to do that for two hours or if I'm tracking my time, I can say that I did that for two hours. And then maybe here, you know, I'm getting um, feedback from my CP. And so they've been uh, giving me feedback and now I'm going to like go through it and do some editing. And maybe I want to do that till 12 so that I can take a lunch break. And then you have that time sort of blocked off for that main goal, but now you're putting in the actual uh, tasks that are going to help you accomplish that goal, if that makes sense.
But if you're more like me, you might be a person that thrives on a little more variety and um, changing uh, from thing to thing after a couple hours just helps re reinvigorate you and um, gives you more energy. And so if you're that kind of person, then I might break up your time or your day into three or more blocks. So for me, um, I think the schedule that I'm going to try to stick to going forward is to start off with my um, book and publishing stuff in the morning. And for me, I've realized that if I get too much into this other stuff earlier in the day, then um, the book stuff just gets pushed off and pushed off. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to plan to start to make that a priority in the beginning of the day. Then in the middle of the day, I'm going to check in on my social platforms. I'm going to try to stay off of social media as much as possible um, during the morning so I can just focus on book stuff. But I'm going to connect with people and work on building my author platform in the middle of the day after lunch, and then um, spend maybe the rest of the day working on on side hustles and things that I've committed to and people and clients that I've committed to um, the rest of the day. Now with this, um, it might change from season to season. Even this kind of schedule might change from season to season because maybe you have a book deadline coming up or a launch of um, a book that's going to be published, or maybe you're working on a side hustle that you're launching a new program for. And it just, you know, all of this, most of this, like 90% of this is going to become green because you're working on that or 80% of this is going to become blue because you're working on your book stuff. Um, so it really, I would really make it depend on what is most important to you um, during this season. If things um, are mostly equal, then you can set it up, set it up equally. Um, but if, yeah, if your book stuff is most important to you in this season, then I might work in percentages and sort of say that, okay, I'm going to, maybe you're in an editing stage and you have a deadline and you're like 50% of my time is going to go to editing my book. So I would make the book sections a lot longer during each day. Um, or if again, you're launching some kind of new income stream, then maybe that needs to be um, more of a percentage. But you only have a certain amount of time every week. So that's why I like thinking about percentages and figuring out, okay, for me, if I have 40 hours a week that I'm going to be doing this and I want 50% of my time to be on my books, then I should be, or maybe more, then I should be focusing on making sure that these blocks represent 50% of my time, which would be 20 hours. But if all of that is just like a little too overwhelming for you and you're like, I don't even know like what is most important right now or what kind of schedule would work better for me if like doing this in the morning would work better or in the afternoon or whatever, um, I would suggest tracking your time first and then figuring out a schedule from there. So I would start sort of with an experiment where you start with a blank slate here and um, each week um, block off events and time sensitive things first. So again, if you have like for me, I might have a live stream or a meeting or a call or any of those kind of things that are pre-scheduled, I would put those in first. Then um, I would write out my to-dos for the week and then post them in the free spaces one after the other. So if I wanted to do editing book, I would put that here. And then if I wanted to do, you know, film, YouTube video, then I would put that here. And obviously I would then click here and say save. And I would just put everything one after the other in no particular order, just so you have a block for each thing. And then you can go in and be like, you know what? Um, I really need to get this video filmed because I want to put it out on Thursday. So that's definitely going to stay on Monday. But I think the um, editing of the book stuff is going to happen on Tuesday. So, and maybe that's going to take me, you know, you know, I'm going to block off a few hours here and filming usually takes me about two hours. So I'm going to do that here and you can sort of just move things around. But I found it really helpful when I'm like trying to redo my schedule a lot of the time and whatever schedule that I've preset isn't working that I go back to this sort of basic format and I put in like all of my stuff with one hour blocks. Um, and then I just play Tetris and I move it around and then I experiment and I try go throughout the week and I see if it works um, and what works and what doesn't work. And I sort of um, evaluate that. And then I sort of stand back and I say, okay, can I make a um, actual like kind of ideal schedule 
out of that. So again, whether you are just creating this for the first time um, or you have an ideal schedule and going forward, again, I would be tracking real time. And I'll just be really transparent here and just show you a quick look. Here we go at the last few weeks and how I've been spending my time. And I've been trying to refigure out what kind of schedule works for me. But now after going through a few weeks, I'm now at a point that I'm like, okay, I think that this schedule might help me focus a little bit more and separate my goals and figure out what will work. Whereas the last few weeks, um, I've been very book focused because I've been preparing to um, get ready for author mentor match. But now I want to get back into a rhythm where I'm sort of um, making sure that I have a little bit of time for each one and each part of my goals. But that's why I think it's so important to, again, use your calendar, not just as like to preset everything up, but to actually track your time in real time. So again, each day I start with my ideal schedule, but then I update my calendar as I do things so I can track where my time is actually going. And I love that Google Calendar also has an app so I can do this um, when I'm not near my computer as well. And when I track my time, I just learn so much about what's really working for me and then I can create a better routine accordingly. If you're excited to dig in and create your own ideal schedule, let me know below in the comments. And once you create it, if you wanna post a picture of it on your Instagram or Twitter account, be sure to tag me and I'd love to give you a shout out. If you wanna check out even more productivity tips, you can check out my full playlist on the screen here and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any future productivity videos like this one, including how I use my Trello Kanban board, which is coming soon.